So you want to put a 350 or 370Z transmission behind your JZ and uh, you know, I don't know, maybe you're putting it into your S chassis, but uh, th that's what I'm doing. And these are all the parts that I bought to make that swap possible. So to start, it's the transmission itself. I went for the internal slave cylinder uh, CD009 transmission or JK40, whatever you want to call it. It's actually out of a 370Z. So no synchro issues, no worries about internals. It's the good strong transmission. Uh, you can tell because of that rev match little ECU there. So yeah, 370Z transmission. Drive shaft for CD trans to S13 diff. Got the transmission cross member and mount. Got these engine mounts just so um, my engine is for sure placed correctly as far as like forward and back goes so there's no issues there. And interestingly enough I bought it from Collins but you can see that it has excessive, that excessive logo on it that they uh, cleaned up and took off. Excessive. So, yeah, kind of interesting. Got my mounts. I used to run hockey puck mounts, but uh, I, I wasn't actually expecting to get these, but I'll run them. They're nice, solid. No vibrate or no engine movement there. I got a GK Tech short shifter. This is, as far as I know, the farthest forward shifter that you can buy. Um, most shifters, I believe, utilize this joint or or this they you know you cut right here and you weld your piece there but uh, the GK Tech actually cuts I believe back here so there's no U-joint it's just back there so the shifter sits like really far forward of course JZ to CD009 adapter plate the transmission or the the clutch setup I went with was the dual disc setup. Good for 800 foot pounds of torque or so. Um, I'll probably never get there, but it's nice to know that my clutch can handle it. All the miscellaneous bolts. These are the uh, the pressure plate bolts that go through there. Uh, looks like this is the adapter plate bolt set. Um, not quite sure what those are. Flywheel bolts. I'll figure that out. Uh, this is the spacer. So this this sits on the crank side. This sits on the clutch side. I don't know why they have so many holes. I don't know if this is like a universal application or something. But uh, yeah, this actually was the item that was holding up my shipment. Uh, it uh, took a quite a bit to get to me and uh, every time I emailed them they're like yeah this is the uh, the custom spacer we're just waiting on the machine shop so yeah is what it is I guess uh, and to run this you need a Jay-Z automatic flex plate and the spacer uh, so this the flat or the the not flat spacer with the kind of lip on it sat between the flex plate and the torque converter and this fatter flat one sat between the flex plate and the crankshaft. Now I called up Brett Collins and I was like, you know, what what disc do I need? And he said, I need this flat one that sits between the flex plate and the crank the crankshaft. And I guess that makes sense. That spaces out the flex plate to where it is stock, so you have proper starter engagement. But uh, Jesse was telling me that he had to actually run this on his. Um, I don't know why. Perhaps, you know, at the machine shop they machine this incorrectly for him. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to think about that because uh, it is quite the job to pull the, uh, the trans and uh, get it out there. So if it was, you know, flip-flopped and I did the thick one, I need the thin one, or thin one, I need the thick one. Uh, that's uh, that's quite the job. So I don't know. I'm gonna think about it for a bit. Don't really want to have to tear this apart again. And the final piece is the Z-Speed clutch slave cylinder. Now, if you go on Z-Speed's website, they have two styles of slave cylinders for 350Zs. 
I, I got the one for the dual disc setup. I heard this is pretty much 100% necessary as the stock internal slave is uh, pretty much just made of plastic and it'll explode after a few clutch kicks. So you don't want that. You know, this is nice, solid, all metal construction. So a couple things to note about this kit. I ordered this on, uh, I believe, February 5th. It was early February. Got the drive shaft shipped out to me and I got it about a week later. But uh, today is like March 29th or 30th, I forget. But uh, I got the rest of the kit on March 28th, nearly a month and a half later. And, um, you know, that sucked. I wish I could have gotten my car up and running a lot sooner than that. But I guess I didn't miss out on any events, so, you know, whatever. But if you're looking at putting a CD trans behind your Jay-Z, you know, take that in into consideration. Collins can take forever to get this stuff shipped out, which is unfortunate. Um, I mean, I know several people who run the Collins kit and they say they have no issues with it. Seems like a pretty solid, solid setup, but um, we'll see. Only time will tell with that, but um, who knows? Perhaps if I had bought the adapter kit from someone else, like a different manufacturer, you know, I could have had the car up and running by now, working out all the bugs. I do have a couple drift events coming up here pretty soon, and, um, you know, fingers crossed this all goes together without a hitch, but, um, you know, it's kind of cutting it close. So all the reading I've done seems to indicate that I have all the parts I need to do this swap. Uh, if you have any questions on this swap or how to do it yourself, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'll try to help you as best I can. I'll probably be putting this swap together in the next few days and hopefully the drift car will be up and running within, you know, the week, the end of the week. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. More drift, more drift car stuff is uh, on the way. Got some more Power Stroke videos coming up. And uh, thanks for watching.